I'm delighted to be joined this morning by Matthew Gwyther, the editor of Management Today. Now, Matthew, Management Today has just refreshed its look, its image. Uh, what were you trying to achieve? Uh, well, we last redesigned about 10 years ago in 2003. Um, we wanted to refresh it. We feel very strongly that there's a future in the print product. Our readers tell us that they regard getting in every month as a, as a treat and put aside time to read it at weekends or when traveling or something like that. So we wanted to give it a new fresh look because although it had stood up pretty well to the test of time and had many imitators as well, um, we were all keen to give it that sort of 21st century 2013 look. Now, long form business journalism has changed a lot in the last 10 years with the advent of digital. What do, how do you see the market uh, evolving? We still believe in our long pieces. The longest one we do is one of the ones we're probably best known for, which is a three and a half thousand word profile we do every month. And we'll continue to do so because people read them and they're interested in them. They like them and the top names are still willing to do them. In the next month, we're going to be having both Lord Brown and Mike Rake taking those slots. So we'll carry on doing them for the time being, certainly. Now, you're very much the market leader here in the, US, in the UK, but in the US, there's a very vibrant business uh, media. Do you, what, are there any developments over there that you think will be of interest to uh, bringing over to the UK? Well, there's an amazing amount going on, particularly online in the States. Um, I like Business Insider very much. I did a couple of pieces during the course of the summer for the Wall Street Journal, and I'm always amazed at the number of phone calls and fact-checking systems that get loaded down onto you when you do something like that. I think their business journalism over there is, is, is terrific and we keep a close eye on it. Now, management today also keeps a bit of a weather eye on the PR community and I think it was last year that uh, in a, uh, on, a, on the back of a feature you said that PRs are not just the eyes and ears of an organisation but sometimes even their social conscious, the social conscience of their companies. Have, how have you seen the PR uh, and communications of the of British business change over the past Well, we have years. a lot to do with the communications industry. We're pretty well known for publishing most admired companies every year in, in December. And there's no question that in the decade I've edited the magazine, the role of corporate communications people within large organisations and within medium and small organisations has become more and more important because if you don't have a decent reputation, you simply can't function these days. And if you had a good reputation, and you have problems and you're in danger of sullying in it, then you really need to do something about it. So finally, Matthew, what, what tip would you give to the PRs when they are considering management today and how to approach you? Good ideas, good people, by email, not phone. Thank you very much.